The Blues are doing their best to keep up with the Joneses in the Western Conference, signing center Paul Stasny from the Avalanche to a four-year, $28 million deal. I'm Kerry Chow, joined by ESPN.com hockey writer Scott Burnside. Scott, what do you make of the deal for both teams? Well, uh, first of all, for the St. Louis Blues, uh, to, to nab, I think, arguably, the number one center on the free agency market uh, is, is tremendous. You know, Earlier in the day, Jason Spezza traded from Ottawa to Dallas. The Blues had to express some interest in Spezza. Uh, of course, this works uh, out even better for them. Uh, maybe not as uh, big an offensive upside as Jason Spezza, but it didn't cost them any assets. And for a team that you know, paid dearly for Ryan Miller at the trade deadline uh, last season, uh, to be able to bring in a top-end center to play either in front of or behind David Backus and uh, not have to give up assets is a huge coup for GM Doug Armstrong. Uh, you mentioned keeping pace in the Western Conference. Uh, we already saw Ryan Kessler traded to Anaheim before the draft last Friday in Philadelphia. We mentioned Spezza going to Dallas, another Central Division team. Uh, in the Western Conference, if you aren't two or three deep down the middle with elite players, your chances of advancing deep into the playoffs are, are uh, non-existent, really. So this was a huge deal for the St. Louis Blues. Now, you mentioned the Colorado Avalanche. The Avs are in a little bit different position. They would have liked to keep uh, Stastny, but didn't want to pay uh, beyond what he was making last year, which was around $6 million. Um, and they also have some flexibility. They've got some players who can play center. And then the day before free agency began, they added veteran center Daniel Briere, one of the top playoff performers uh, in recent years. So the Avs have sort of massaged the uh, potential loss of Stastny ahead of the uh, opening of the market on Tuesday. Uh, but for me, the Blues get the best uh, center on the market, and uh, that's good work for GM Doug Armstrong. Absolutely, and you touched on it before, but just how good is the Western Conference going to be on paper next season? Well, it, it's rather incredible when you think about you know, the L.A. Kings, of course, the defending Stanley Cup champions. They're the benchmark in terms of you know, their depth down the middle, and you start with Andre Kopitar. Uh, Jeff Carter, Jarrett Stoll, uh, we saw that depth down the middle. Uh, it was uh, particularly evident, I thought, in the Western Conference Final against the defending Stanley Cup champions from 2013 in Chicago. Um, and, of course, in the finals against New York, the Rangers simply could not match up what the Kings have down the middle. And so you've seen a virtual arms race around the Western Conference with teams that were having an eye to, to imagining a playoff series against the Los Angeles Kings. Um, needing to stock up down the middle. You know, Chicago is a team that's interesting to watch now because they were in the market for uh, possibly a Spezza, certainly looking at Paul Stastny. They would like to get better down the middle, uh, but it's been interesting to watch the other teams, certainly in the Central Division and across the Western Conference, uh, adding good, good players down the middle for what they hope next spring will be a long playoff run. But, uh, yeah, it's a tough place to play hockey in the Western Conference, and if you don't have that depth down the middle, you are at a, a distinct disadvantage. Very busy time of the year for ESPN.com. Hockey writer Scott Burnside, who is, as always, on top of everything. Thanks, Scott. I'm Kerry Chow with your latest ESPN headline.